Hey guys, what's up? I'm Trust MLB Baseball Blogs. It's been a while since we have made a video here. Um, stepping down from baseball for about two days now, watching the NFL draft. It's been a while since we made a video, and guys, we're going to be doing a video on the 2012 MLB free agent class. We're going to make a series of videos talking about the free agent class, um, our predictions on who's going to go where, and will, will the team will the team that the players play for right now will it be re-signed. Richard's not here with us today, but we have Tim stepping in at his position. Tim, it's been a while. Tim, what's going on, man? Nothing. Uh, I was getting worried about you. I didn't know where you guys have been the last few days, but I'm glad to be back on MLB Baseball Vlogs. Um, I'm just glad, happy to make some more videos again. All right, so let's talk about Jose Reyes. Tim, this guy has been injured a bunch last season. He's doing really well so far in 2011. Tell us about Jose Reyes. Is he going to return to the New York Mets? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if you said it. If not, we are talking uh, 2013 uh, or 2012 uh, free agents, I should say. And basically, we're going to break down each position. Me and Justin, or Justin and Richard, whatever. Uh, when we're starting at shortstop. We picked the best five, we thought. Uh, Jose Reyes is a pretty talented player. He can obviously steal a ton of bases. Uh, he will hit somewhere between 280 and 300, which is kind of broad, but uh, he has a career average of 286, so you'd think he'd hit about 290 every year. I like Jose Reyes a lot. He's on my fantasy team, but the notion that he could get like 15 million a year to me is ridiculous because this guy has not put up numbers that warrant a contract like that because he does not hit for enough power to be making 15 million. He's a pretty solid fielder. He's fast, he's a great contact hitter, but great contact hitters don't get that type of deal. You know, They're saying a three-year, $45 million deal would be a team-friendly contract. I believe that a three-year, $40 million deal would be right in where Reyes is actually worth. Um, I do not believe he will be back with the Mets next year. I think the Mets are in a rebuilding phase, and to have a chance to t trade away a 27-year-old shortstop you can get a pretty solid package in return from this guy. I see him being traded. Yeah, I actually I agree with you on that one. Okay, 2005 or 2007, he will sign to a five-year, 33.75 million dollar contract. And since last season, he was just injured all the time. He was always injured. Did not really play a bunch, a lot of baseball. I mean, this guy, as you said before, the Mets are in the are in the rebuilding phase. So they, like you touched back base in a video a long time ago when you were starting off with your channel. You say that there was these two teams who need to rebuild, and you said that was the New York Mets or in the Houston Astros. So you said Jose Reyes and David Wright. David Wright is going to be a free agent in 2013. Jose Reyes is going to be a free agent in 2012. Um, I say that the best chance of the Mets in the rebuilding phase right now is possibly to trade the guy who's coming up uh, first and who's going to hit free agency in 2012, which is going to be Jose Reyes. I say that Jose Reyes is going to be the first one out of New York if you were to choose either David Wright or Jose Reyes to get traded. I say Jose Reyes. But Tim, what team needs Jose Reyes the most? That's a great question. I mean, a lot of teams would like a shortstop. I can envision him with, like, the Red Sox, maybe. Uh, maybe they'll trade Marco Scudero, another uh, expiring contract, and some minor leaguers for Reyes. I mean, they're going to have to bring together a pretty good package. But if you add him into that lineup, he's not going to be expected to do a ton. Maybe he will take a discount to win in a big city. So I, I would like him, uh, him as a Red Sox. Seems to make a lot of sense. You'd be, I'd be pretty surprised if they would trade him within the NL. But if they did, I could see maybe the Reds making a run at him. I mean, Paul Yanish, obviously Jose Reyes is an improvement over Paul Yanish. Uh, th there's a lot of potential situations. We just gotta wait and see. Yeah. So there you go. There's the Jose Reyes story, guys. Next, we're gonna stop off in Philadelphia, where Tim knows how to talk his Philadelphia Phillies. Tim. Tell us all about Jimmy Rollins. Tell us, tell us about his story right now. Jimmy Rollins has got the swag. He's a great fielder. But the bottom line, the hitting has gone down. Uh, this was a guy who, you know, throughout most of his career, he batted 275 with 13 to 15 home runs. He had a few spike years in there where, well, yeah, somewhere in there where he had 25 home runs in 06. He had a solid season. 
And then obviously in 2007, he won the MVP with 30 home runs. Uh, he had 21 home runs in 09. He's not a power hitter, uh, but the thing that's gone that has gone badly for him is he's not hitting any power because he's had he the last few years he's had trouble making contact. Uh, this season he's actually come out pretty good. He's been heading out of the three hole, which is not a long term thing for him. Uh, 284, one home run, and five RBIs. I think Jimmy Rollins will. Jimmy Rollins for sure will be with the Phillies for the remainder of this season. Yeah. Um, the question is, after this season, if he, I, I think he is a candidate that you will see get a three-year deal in the market of about twenty-seven to thirty million dollars. Anywhere higher than that is overpaying. The question is, for the longest tenured Philly, is it worth overpaying? If you're not exactly sure what the production is going to be. Yeah. Um, he was signed through 2011 back in 06. He signed a six-year, $46.5 million contract. What do you think, what teams could use Rollins on their team? What team is really interested in Rollins if you were to, if what team could use his talents? I There's say. so many teams that could use the shortstop. I mean, again, you go to the Red Sox. Marco Scuro is a pretty good player, but, I mean, both these guys would be an improvement. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I think that the bottom line is Shortstop's the hardest position in baseball to find out or to find, which is why I think there could be a team that overpays for Rollins this offseason, and which is why I'm not sure it's 100% out of the question that Jimmy Rollins couldn't leave the Phillies after this season. Yeah. Uh, I heard a lot of people well, talking around my school and everything, you know, being a big baseball fan, talking in the dugout during the games, talking some baseball, talking on our, on our game plan. Uh, a lot of my friends are saying that once Jeter retires, they're gonna. The Yankees are gonna end up signing a big name shortstop. Could you consider Jimmy Rollins a New York Yankee at 2013 if Jeter retires or 2014? Well, Jeter's only gonna be 37 years old. Rollins isn't gonna be a free agent. Well, actually, he could be potentially, but Rollins will probably be done by then. Not done like retiring, but not good enough. No, Jimmy Rollins is not gonna be a Yankee. I mean, I think Jimmy Rollins is a Philly. And uh, maybe that's just because as long as I've watched baseball, pretty much, Jimmy Rollins has been a Philly. So I think he long-term will end up re-signing with the Phillies for at least one more contract. You know, we got to wait and see. Yankees don't seem like a likely possibility there. Uh, it's going uh, to be interesting to see if they do a Jeter. I think Jeter eventually probably will leave there. I think he's uh, kind of on the downside of his career at this point, but it's going to be a sticky situation no matter what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next off, that's, we have Alex Gonzalez of the Atlanta Braves. Um, this guy's not known for hitting those home runs. He's known at playing at defense. Tim, tell us about Alex Gonzalez and where will this guy end up? One thing that makes uh, Jose Reyes so valuable in the open market this year is he's 27. Jimmy Rollins will be 32 by the time he plays next season. Uh, Marco Scudero is 34 or 35. Alex Gonzalez 34, and Miguel Tejada, our fifth best, is 36 years old. So that makes Reyes valuable. Uh, Alex Gonzalez has never been known for hitting necessarily, even with his days with the Marlins, with the Red Sox, with the Reds. He's had a pretty strange MLB career, but he's been pretty successful. He's had a few years where he's hit about 20 home runs, including last year where he hit 23, and then he had other seasons where he hit, like, 5 and 10 home runs, and, you know, he's not a great hitter, and the, the thing that's really been troubling with this guy is his health, but, man, can this guy play in the field. I mean, the Red Sox fans said for a year, just let this guy play in the field because he's amazing. Yeah. This guy's been signed to a two-year deal, a $5.25 million contract. Is that contract worth his worth his talents? Wait, can, can you repeat the numbers there? $5.25 million over two years. He'll, I guess he was either acquired or he was traded from Toronto to Atlanta. Is yeah, that he got worth... traded for Yunel uh, Escobar. Yeah, that, that contract's worth it, for sure. Yeah, so I really think that what team could, I can possibly see him possibly going back to Toronto maybe because I heard that Toronto I heard they're going to be giving up maybe a second baseman I think it was Aaron Hill who Toronto said who's going to be a trade candidate I could possibly see Alex Gonzalez once his contract runs out possibly at the end of this season could make a run back at Toronto because he was pretty much really decent in Toronto but 
I could possibly see Alex Gonzalez heading back to Toronto. Next up on our... Well, what you say? Oh, well, that's a possibility. A more likely, two more likely spots are the Florida Marlins if they did decide to go in another direction with Hanley Ramirez, which I don't think is likely, or the Baltimore Orioles. We'll, we'll have to see what they do with J.J. Hardy, who is a free agent at the end of this season. But Gonzalez could fit there as well. Yeah. Uh, next off, we have our the Boston Red Sox, Marco Scudero. Tim, what is the deal with Marco Scudero? He's had an up and down MLB career. He's 35 years old. I mean, this for sure is going to be his last year in the Red Sox uniform, in my mind. Um, I don't know exactly where he's going to go, but what I do know, the guy's a pretty good shortstop. He's nothing special, but he gets the job done. Absolutely. I mean, Marco Scudero, he's coming. Uh, he's coming from Toronto. I mean, he spent a year. I think it was a year in Toronto, but he's most likely known in Oakland. He's somewhat known in Toronto, but his times in the Boston Red Sox organization is most likely done. Um, he has a 2012 team option. Uh, he was signed through 2011. He has a two-year contract worth $12.5 million. Tim, is his contract worth it? His time. Uh, if he can put up decent numbers throughout the season, the Red Sox can afford a bit of a overpayment, which is kind of what they did for him. It's worth it. There's no way in hell that option's getting picked up, though. Yeah. Um, guys, to finally end up our top five free agents in 20, uh, 2012 at shortstop position, Miguel Tejada. Tim, I used to enjoy watching this guy when he wasn't doing steroids, but when he was doing steroids, I just lost so much respect on him. Wait, wait, wait. When wasn't he doing steroids, though? I know. It was just a little joke right there. Um, All right. Tim, tell us about Miguel Tejada. Is he going to end up coming back to San Francisco next season? Um, I'd be surprised. Well, I guess I wouldn't be surprised because, like I said, shortstops are so hard to find. This could be a spot where Jimmy Rollins lands because he's from out west. That's a, He's from Oakland, actually. That could be a possibility, too. Uh, th- this was basically a move that they said, we need a shortstop desperately. Uribe left us. We signed him. I don't know. I mean, in my opinion at this point, he's just a, he's a below-average shortstop who has about nothing left in the tank. We'll see what happens with him. I mean, the name doesn't interest me at all at this point. I don't think he's really anything. He, he could go to a bad team, but the fact that he's playing on a good Giants team doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, he was, he actually did sort of decent with his time in San Diego. Sort of decent, I have to say. Yeah, no, he, he had a good year last year. I mean, I, just, I think that was a fluke because I don't think he has that much. Of, he'll hit you two-something with uh, 15 home runs at this point, but this was a guy that once hit 35 home runs a year, too. Yeah. But he was on steroids. Uh, Toronto, well not Toronto, I should say Baltimore, he did not do well in the first half of the season. He was, when he came over to San Diego, I thought, wow, I think this, this is, was he a main part of the Padres' success from last season? Uh, he was looked at as the finishing piece that would help get them to the playoffs, so I guess if you look at it in that light, maybe not, but it is what it is. I mean, he, he's a, he's still a decent player, I just, I'm not a fan of anyone that uses steroids. Yeah, so there you go, guys. As our 2012 shortstop free agency class, uh, who, where do you guys think these guys will go? You let us know in the comment section. The, the comment section below. We'll talk to you guys later. Um, next up, we'll most likely have either catcher or first base. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. We are back and we're making videos, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.